What he says is, in your dream, even if you have this problem, but in your dream, he says, you feel like, a, I mean, you dream like, like us. to get us around the cabin while the plane is flying. Like if I had to use a restroom, yeah. I'd get a leg bag on. Yeah. And I'd just take a little uh, empty pop bottle and it's draining the pop bottle and have someone take it and dump it in the restroom. How about just standing up and getting some blood flow and... I probably won't stand up on the plane. Okay. No, you know, no, no, you, <laughs> you know what, oh, it's a we... <laughs> Gary, oh my God, Gary, oh, look what he's doing now. No, no, no. When I was 17 years old, I broke my neck in a fall from a cliff. But somehow I went off the edge of the cliff, 42 feet, 10 inches, and broke my neck. Next thing I know, it's two weeks later, and I'm in the hospital. I was in the rehab center for a year. I got out, spent a few months at home, and then uh, went into college. I think the end of the first year there, I met a friend of mine, and he says, well, what, you know, spring break, why don't we go down to Florida? And I thought, well, all right, why not? <laughs> so we, we did. That was my first road trip uh, after becoming disabled. Since then, I've, I've, I've done a lot of traveling. Went through 49 states, uh, you know, did Canada, Mexico, Central America. Actually, been traveled on seven continents, but uh, it all started in college uh, with some college friends. Sometimes when I have coffee, I have sugar. Sometimes I have cream. I like to live dangerously. Ready? Right, yeah. Count of three. Ten, nine. Here we go. <laughs> My brother Robert calls and says, uh, I want to go to Everest with you. I want to go as your attendant. And this is very strange because uh, my brother Robert, I don't think he's ever gone camping a day in his life. My brother was going. I found out he was going. And uh, I knew there was no way of talking him out of it. Frankly, I think the whole thing's insanity. So I thought there might be a good idea for a family connection to be there. My brother Robert sells uh, computer supplies, but he's he's a very talented musician. Unfortunately, it's it's tough for musicians to get a job, so uh, he works selling computer supplies. One of the very few photos of Gene and I uh, before his accident, and Gene is trying to coax me into coming over, and this photo just reminds me of him calling, saying, hey, take a chance, take a chance. You know, you might learn something. Our team will fly halfway around the world to Kathmandu, Nepal. From there, our journey will continue by a twin otter airplanes to Lukla at 9,200 feet. This is where our 21-day trek to Everest Base Camp will begin. We'll be trekking on ancient trading routes still utilized by Nepali, Tibetan, and Indian traders. These trails range in difficulty from hard to nearly impossible. Altitude will be one of our biggest challenges, with our final destination of base camp at 17 and a half thousand feet. Everybody come to see very interesting, say, oh, what kind of people? And everybody say, where they go? What they, what? They want to do. I say, my friend Gary, he bring um, this kind of people he, he want to take to Everest Baskin uh, wheelchair. They ask a oh, wheelchair, what is the wheelchair? Nobody knows. Oh, that time I'm scared. Well, first day in, in Kathmandu is like this difficult. How we take to Everest Baskin? Oh, no, it's not. It's 
some kind of ceramic compound. Just move your hands and no, no, you keep walking, turn away, and don't ever touch anything when they go to show you something. If you touch it, they'll stay on you, though. Yeah, and you like sharks. Doggone it. Wait, I had one of these in a Cracker Jack box. Did anybody answer? Look, and I don't use the toilet paper. I used the Kleenex when I ran out of toilet paper. Okay, so you won't find any Kleenex in there. You already used like 10 rolls since we've been here. Jose, there's only a couple sheets per roll. They're not big on toilet paper out here. I'm telling you, it's not like the in thing. God help me. Take me now, Lord. Please, please. I can't take it any longer. I need new, new roommates. Okay. I'll try it again. You ready? Mm -hmm. Murphy That's time. Pretty <laughs> I'm pretty much uh, a morning person. I love to get up in the morning and uh, get dressed, get out, take advantage of the day, uh, take advantage of all the daylight hours. Uh, and there's so much to do, particularly in an area like Nepal. So much to do and see. It's, I, I think it's a crime to, not to take advantage of that. We'll have time to sleep when we get back to the States. I was teaching at Western New Mexico University. Uh, I hired Jose to work for me out there. He's a great attendant, real capable, uh, able to do just about anything. And he loves the mountains, so when it, Came time to go to Everest. Uh, I called him up. So I said, "Hey, you want to go?" Or, That's good. Yeah, I don't think he'll go to K2 with me, but. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll be there too. Okay. <laughs> good deal. After this, you will decide to leave that job where you're at and do something you really like. You should find something you really enjoy in life, like. For me, I enjoy traveling because this is what I do. Find a way to, to do it. He was always the adventurous type. I mean, he, uh, he knows how to live. I know I wouldn't have ever done any kind of traveling to this magnitude if it wasn't for him. Come on! Uh, We're so going to Everest! <laughs> yeah! We're taking two twin auto airplanes to the mountain airstrip in Lukla, our starting off point for this expedition. Here we are in downtown Lukla, elevation uh, 9,200 feet, and I felt the difference in weather immediately. <laughs> A little bit on the cold side here. I'm thinking about heading into town. Okay. You game? Yeah, I'm game. Good. I'm fine down. Well, Right. I've got it. I've got it. <laughs> I got it. You got it? Yeah, I got it. All right, boss. Check it easy. Take it easy. This is just practice. Right. They got to make sure you guys take it easy today, though. Yeah, I know. This is, this is rest day, not climbing up stair day. You guys are going to be killing yourselves tomorrow when you can't, you're huffing yeah, and puffing. Yeah, no, seriously, true. I'm not getting around. No, I know you are. Got to, got to take it easy. Let go. Let go. There you go. Now we don't need that. Go through it. No, it's hot. When you first arrive, Immediately, you feel great, but the altitude hasn't caught up with you yet. 
with Matt and Riley and overexertion very early on, it would be a real shame that their trip back to Captain Doom, back to the U.S., would come early. I'll get this back to you in a second. I made it! Yeah! <laughs> no limits. I ended up getting dehydrated, so I was, I was just sick. It was horrible, horrible feelings. I was scared when it happened because I'm thinking to myself, this is the first day, and if I can't hack the first day, how am I going to hack the, the rest of the trip? What? What'd you say? I said you have yourself one jerry-rigged chair here. <laughs> have you found that contact lens yet, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> just take care on the trail there are some points where we're on the edge of the trail it's going to go down very very steep we're going through some places where there has been some landslides in the past just take care and go slowly today okay you ready one okay two three we're out of the way. Okay, everyone follow me. The terrain is rugged enough that I will rarely be in my wheelchair. I'll be carried uh, on the back of a Sherpa. They'll put me in a wicker basket called a doko. One Sherpa at a time will carry me on his back in that basket. And after perhaps 15, 20 minutes of carrying me, he'll, he'll trade off with another Sherpa. That way we could get go through just about any type of terrain. These guys, Sherpa, these are, they're amazing individuals. They can even run with me on their back. It's like no big deal to them. Here we go! Team Everstone 3, let's yeah. go! <laughs> Let's do it again! The team is starting to arrive in Gorg Shep, our last stop before base camp. Dr. McCoy, we've got a man down. Dr. McCoy, we've got a man down. Where's the doctor? Robert just came and got me maybe at like midnight last night and said that Gene was not feeling all that well. At some point in the night, Gene started making these horrible sounds. It was as though someone took a tire pump to his abdomen and had inflated it. I mean, it was like swelling it hugely. And I didn't know what was going on. And he was starting to lose blood through his nose and he was starting to cough up blood. I, I freaked out and I, I ran outside to get the doctor. You know, he's had what's called small bowel obstruction before, where your bowels can actually kind of rotate on themselves and get kinked. The problem lies when you get strangulated. When it twists completely on itself, it loses its blood supply, and it's, it's like having a heart attack in your intestines. I didn't know that he was going to make it through the night. I, didn't, I thought there was a very good chance he might not. And um, so I, I thought, well, I'm, I'm glad I'm here, and I can, I, I can help him to die. You know, I can be there with him when he dies and, and, and know that he 
he's at Mount, you know, he's at Mount Everest while he's going. Giannis, uh, he looked at my brother and he said, you realize we're gonna need to get you out of here. We're gonna have to evacuate. And uh, Gene said, yes, I, I understand that. And then the doctor looked at him and he said, are you at peace with that? Could he handle the, the idea that, you know, we were 300 feet altitude from base camp and uh, needed to turn around? And Gene said, yeah, I, I'm okay with that. Gene, do you want a blanket? Gene, you want a sleeping bag or a blanket over your abdomen? He needs to get his... Yeah, you're right, his belly's exposed. His, his belly is exposed. He's got BP, belly exposure. Gene, are you ready? All right, buddy, I'm gonna see what's in us, huh? Sounds great, Gary. All right. I'll call you that way. All right, man. All in all, 17,000 feet. I mean, he's gone higher than any quadriplegic that I know of. You know, highly successful mission. And uh, it was good to get to know him again after all these years. It's been nine years. It took, me, it took me a while to get to know him again. And I'm uh, very proud of him. Very proud of him. You know, things can go wrong just about any time. And when you're so close <laughs> to the final prize, it's, uh, it's particularly tough. But, uh, but the important thing is making the effort to go out there and follow your dreams. <laughs> and uh, it's been some of the most exciting uh, almost four weeks of my life. So uh, I wouldn't hesitate to do this again in a heartbeat. Fun trucking, everybody. I was glad to have Robert along with me on this adventure. And I, I know that he really wanted to make it to base camp. But um, you know, the circumstances required that Robert had to come with me. I'm hoping it'll uh, encourage Robert to step out of his comfort zone and try some other things, like uh, either uh, looking for another job or or making new inroads in the music industry, or just doing something different and exciting.